first and foremost, I just really want to know how much of this Rick was done practically because like it's gorgeous, but obviously it's very hard to find a Minotaur to film these things. I know they're very busy, they're booked and and whatever, but how much of this was actually done practically? Because there's a lot. There, it's a lot of mysticism. The producers will always say this. It's it's meant to be difficult to tell what is special effects, what is a prop, what is a guy in a costume. It shouldn't be easy to tell the difference. The Minotaur, which you mentioned, was one of the most challenging monsters, I think. We, we started with him in development right when we started writing the script. I mean, that was something we talked about really early on. Yeah. You know, how it was going to look, how it was going to be different from other Minotaurs. Um, you know, how it was going to be the monster that Percy fights. Yeah, I mean, as, in, as a book author, it's easy for me to say, and here's the Minotaur. Actually right. showing it on the screen, that's a whole other thing. And so right. we had to rely very heavily on, thank goodness we had the great uh, special effects team we have that could create that incredible monster. Um, I love that, that now that it's out in the world, a lot of the fans are looking at the Minotaur and being, oh, he's so cute. Yes. <laughs> Like I think it's the underwear that did it. I really do think it's the underwear. That was that the was the touch that it needed. It we need, sells it. I mean, yeah, we need a little stuffed plushie with um, oh, yeah. the minotaur in the underwear. Yeah. Mm. Right. See, now yeah. we're now we're thinking. Now we're cooking with gas. And it's like, going to be the baby Yoda of the season. You watch. Yeah. It a hundred percent is a hundred percent. Well, Becky, I want to ask you, what is it like not only working with Rick on this, but also just kind of like as a partner, seeing him get to work on this this time around? Because we all know how things went the first time around with an adaptation of these books. Much different this time. You guys are very heavily involved. I know that much. So just walk me through this process. I mean, oh. again, working with him and also just sort of seeing him work on it this time. Well, Rick, Rick and I have been together since we were 16 years old. This is just an extension of, you know, all the time that we've ever spent together. And um, working with him is not any different than anything else that we've ever done. Um, uh, has it brought any surprises? I don't know. Um, I yeah you, you, I mean you think it's just a it's a sort of a different format in which mm -hmm. poor Becky has to put up with me but yeah. <laughs> but aside from that I think we we have worked so well together and we have such a uh, thankfully a great foundation and a partnership that it's easy for us as a team to work together which helped I think working with the larger team too because we had a very unified. Right. idea if, if there's things that rick misses that i've noticed um i can tell him and vice versa mm -hmm. um so we we have a, a better understanding of what's going on on yeah. set and what's going on in, in the scripts and yeah and and, and like she's uh, like becky said it is an extension of our relationship mm -hmm. as the books are i mean they all come from a very personal emotional place so i think that was the biggest um trepidation that we had in our sons right. too Especially, as you mentioned, after the last adaptation, which we were not involved yeah, in, and all. which was not, uh, you know, a great experience for us. Our sons were very worried. You know, mom and dad, are you sure I, you want to expose yourself yeah, to this? Yeah, yeah, because it's emotional to talk about a story that is about yourself. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, from, from sitting in the writer's room, um, be, even being on set, uh, these are stories that are about us. Um, luckily, they're about everybody else, too. So um, everybody else is bringing their experiences to the stories. Um, so we can take a little bit of a step back. But, it, it, you know, it's very personal. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I am curious for both of you. Is there a moment, because obviously you have been so heavily involved in this process, I mean, through casting, through writing rooms, through all of it. I mean, you've seen, I'm sure, cuts of this that like had never made the light of day that are very different from the final product. But curious for each of you, was there a moment in this process, whether it's the writing room, whether it's the casting, whether it's seeing the first cut, where you were like, all right, this time we got it. Like, we're doing it right. I know, Rick, age was very important for you, for the kids. So I know that was something that you guys stayed true to. But when you're seeing the final product, is there a moment that you're like, yes, this well, this is what I wanted this adaptation to be? Being on the set of Camp Half-Blood, I think. <laughs> Um, you know, <laughs> Dan and, and all the crew, they completely nailed it. You know, our art director yeah. is fabulous. Um, he was on Lord of the Rings. Dan Henna and, um, did a great job. He didn't want it to be Lord of the Rings and he heard us and he, you know, he died, you know, the crew dived in deep. So walking into um, the Hermes cabin and you won't see all the details um, on mm -hmm. the screen. 
but Rick and I know that they're there. I have pictures, um, and it, it, it was it was really emotional. Yeah, yeah, yeah. seeing it physically yeah. rendered as a place and being able to walk into it. Poseidon's cabin. Poseidon's cabin. Yeah, mm -hmm. it. Um, that's I think was was the most effective thing for me. That the most impactful. It was. And it's seen Rick's so face <laughs> when we saw it for the first time. Yeah. Well, and, it, and it's stunning on the screen. And I did, knowing how TV shows are made, I'm sitting here watching it. And I'm like, there's probably so many little things. There's probably something carved into this wall that like I can't see. And it yes. really is so fun to watch these all come together. Obviously, right. those things have to change when you're making a TV show. There are some things that don't work. I've spoken to some of the other EPs and they mentioned that like Gabe was one of those things because in the book, he's certainly a little bit more sinister. and We can't necessarily show that on screen. Right. Rick, was there any any kind of other examples for you that was like, yeah, this one really just didn't work for book to screen. We just couldn't we couldn't make this one fit. We had those conversations, but I think that's the important thing is that they were conversations and we were all in agreement uh, about yeah. what wouldn't translate. Yeah, Disney idea about what's appropriate television for a four quadrant a family friendly audience is um, very aligned with um, ours yeah so it was it was we were like thank goodness we're here um, so yeah I mean I, I don't know that I can pick out a whole lot of specifics it was more um, well I mean there were some character choices that we had to make like Argus the camp uh, security guy who is a giant with a hundred eyes we put him in there um, but it was just going to be so complicated to try to figure out how to render that person with a hundred eyes. And also that, that episode already had so much in it that we just all agreed, you know, let's save him. Maybe he'll come back next season. Yeah, and, I, and he would be um, an element that's for humor, um, unfortunately, in that, and yeah. then didn't need humor in that uh, location yeah. where we wanted to put him. It needed to be serious and it needed to be Percy talking about losing his mother, right. not having Argus, you know, surprise us with his eyes. Yeah. Mm, so. That makes sense. Well, we are getting very close to the end of my time here. I do. I want to think ahead to next season, next possible couple seasons, hopefully. The way that I'm obsessed with the casting of everyone, I mean, from the kids, yes, but also your gods. Like Jason Manzoukas is a perfect Dionysus. I, from the mm -hmm. minute he stepped on screen, I was like, yup, that was that was 100% the right call. If you could dream cast anyone at this point, who who are you putting in future seasons of Percy Jackson? I don't I want to think that far ahead. Yeah. Because, and Rick you know, and I never do that. <laughs> we, I, do, I, never, you know. I never dream cast yes. my own books. Yes. I just don't do it. I, I don't want to prejudice it. And I don't We've been so lucky just finding the right people with no preconceptions that I think that's the way I want to go forward. And it may be somebody, I, I, honestly, I don't watch a lot of film, so it probably will be somebody that I don't know. And it may be somebody that um, is a fan of um, the book series yeah. and sees this TV show and says, hey, I want to be involved with it because my kids love it. Um, yeah. So we need to keep you know, those possibilities open. Absolutely. Well, I will say you've done a fantastic job so far. Jessica Parker Kennedy as Medusa was, oh, it was just chef's kiss. It was great. But guys, that is my time. Rick and Becky, thank you so much for taking the time to thank speak you. with me. Thank you. Appreciate you both and congrats on the series.